at ICT-EDU 2014 at LRT, the Linux Institute of Technology, and I have a live audience in front of me as I introduce Claire, who's going to share a memory, because that's what we're talking about. Claire um, is going to share a memory from her time growing in Africa, in South Africa. So please, everyone, give it up for Claire. So now we're going to fade out that first piece of music and I'll fade Claire's memory in. Honestly, it sounds really great. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, just the way this, um, this it's going to last a minute, this is all we, we're going to be. So at the moment, um, Claire is telling her memory and you'll be able to hear, she's, she's put in a soundscape and um, uh, just to give you a sense of where she's at. And what I would have asked you, um, so I'm going I'm to leave this um, on while, while I finish talking to you. Um, what I was going to ask you is, is what, what, does, what does audio mean to you? Because to me, obviously, audio um, gives, gives me a, a lot of uh, clues and stuff like that. But um, audio, I, I'll probably give you some of the answers really, but when you listen back to this audio that, that we've created, um, it will tell you, uh, you know, where, where you were at the time, it will remind you, won't it? Um, it will, uh, you'll, you'll hear um, Claire's individual take. She even spoke to Afrikaans. She actually said, um, she says in Afrikaans that I um, hope that you enjoyed her memory and that you have a really good day. Um, so, Hello everyone, this is Paul Hopkins VR Podcasting. I hope you're all well. Uh, I am live at ICT EDU 2014 at LIT, the Limerick Institute of Technology. And I have a live audience in front of me as I introduce Claire, who's going to share a memory because that's what we're talking about. Claire um, is going to share a memory from her time growing up in Africa, in South Africa. So please everyone, give it up for Claire. I was nine when we moved to South Africa and I had to attend the only school in the country where visually impaired children could be educated. Um, and it was also an Afrikaans speaking school and I was newly emigrated from England so that made me somewhat unique in their eyes. Um, and it was a, a very steep learning curve where I was dropped in the deep end on a Sunday night and then thrown into this world where I didn't speak their language and they didn't speak mine and I didn't get to go back home to my English parents until Friday. Um, and I vividly remember somebody saying to me one day, well you're going to have to speak Afrikaans because we're not going to speak to you in English. And so I was really faced with two choices really. I either had to accept I would never make friends or I had to learn to speak the language. <laughs> And that's exactly what I did for the next, um, well, really for the next um, eight, nine years, I threw myself into, into the language. And within about a year, I was fluent. Within 18 months, it had become my first language. Um, my parents moved further away when I was 11. And so the Afrikaans was what I lived and breathed. And all my friends were Afrikaans. I did all my subjects in Afrikaans. Um, and it essentially... I did better in Afrikaans than I did in English, and so, yeah, it was the, the, the biggest learning experience of my life, really. So, yeah, um, and all I would say in Afrikaans is, uh, bye, donkey, dadilakalaistrik, and, uh, for me, did I further.